you think of an infant that's born, their first language is self-expression. It's emotion. If they're hungry, they cry. If they are uncomfortable, they cry. Everything is emotion. That is the only way they can communicate. Well, narcissistic parents, they cause such an emotion of disgust at the emotional needs of their children that they inflict shame on their children so that they don't have to meet their needs. It's a sad truth. Parents are there to meet the needs of the children, but with narcissistic family dynamics, you're there to meet the needs of the parent, no matter how young you are. And so what happens is the narcissistic parent just inflicts so much shame on your emotions. If you're upset, if you're angry, you're shamed. If you're lonely, you're shamed. If you're scared, you're shamed. You're made to feel so much shame for normal emotions. And so imagine being shamed and made to feel so horrible just for being you, just for having emotions. This causes a child to disconnect from their emotions. They go into a few different coping skills. So some children might go into fawning where that's where codependency is born. People look so down on codependency. And the reality is, is that a lot of people that are codependent is because it is actually trauma-induced codependency. If they didn't fawn, they were severely shamed and emotionally abused to the degree that it was too much for them. So that's the fawning response. The other common response in childhood is freeze. So your fight and your flight get suppressed. Now in childhood, that's a smart thing because you can't fight back. You're, you're going to be overpowered by a narcissistic parent. You can't flee because where are you going to go? You're a toddler. You can't take care of yourself. And so it's a smart coping skill in childhood, but it is so damaging, so damaging to the child and who the adult becomes when that child grows up. The survival brain kicks on and basically tells you that no emotion is safe. You start feeling like emotions are the enemy. So you wind up getting dissociated, right? Your brain just says, okay, it's too much for you. Let's separate you from your emotions. Or you wind up feeling numb all the time as if you're watching your life as if it's a movie instead of you being in your life. And you wind up terrified, terrified of feeling an emotion. You go through life thinking, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play small. I'm going to be invisible. I'm going to shrink myself down. I'm not going to make myself seen, heard, or anything because you're afraid of not only your emotions, but then you become afraid of other people's emotions as well. And how do you live life? trying to avoid emotions. That's like trying to not blink, right? Trying to live life, not blinking. It's not going to happen. And it's going to create a lot of discomfort. It's the same thing when we, we are trying to avoid our emotions. On top of that, we can't make decisions because our emotions are our compass. Our emotions are our feedback that tell us what's important to us. They tell us what is good for us, what is bad for us, what resonates with us, what doesn't, what feels comfortable, what feels uncomfortable. Without that compass, what do you have to guide you? Well, I'll tell you what the narcissist wants. The narcissist wants to be that compass for you for the rest of your life. And so they train their children to not have an inner compass. And that's why Another thing that happens is when they become adults, they wind up always having to check in with the what the narcissist thinks. Is that going to make them happy? And they've never learned how to self-validate. So it's detrimental. It, it's awful being raised this way. And what makes it even more harmful is the fact that when you have been provoked to shame all the time and you wind up with a default emotional state of shame. Your body memorizes that emotion for you because it's like, oh, you're feeling that all the time. It must be important. Let me help you. Remember, you wake up, you feel shame. I'll give you the chemical makeup 
so that you can have that shame because that's what we do. And then your body's on default and it's creating more and more of it, even if your circumstances have changed. And we as humans can be like tuning forks in the sense that if we are resonating at shame, I talked about this recently in the certification, the trauma-informed narcissistic abuse uh, certification class. I talked about how one tuning fork, if it's at a certain frequency, if you hit it and you simply place it next to another tuning fork that's uh, at the same frequency, you don't have to hit this one. It starts vibrating simply by being close to the other tuning fork. Well, it's the same thing with people that have shame. I think something that I hear all the time with my clients is they're like, Michelle, once I learn about narcissistic abuse, I look at my life and I start looking at the people in my life and I realize how many people are on that scale or how many unhealthy relationships I have. It's unbelievable as I start to really peel it back. And that's what happens as we're healing and we start realizing it and we look around, shame attracts shame in so many different ways. Just think about that. So you're provoked in childhood to have this template of shame. Now you resonate with shame. And guess who else resonates with shame? Covert narcissists. Covert narcissists act amazing, but they are so shame-based that they wind up attracting two kinds of people into their life. People that will be their flying monkeys and that are going to look up to them and think they're super amazing and people that they can dump their shame into and that can carry their pathology, basically. And so adult children of narcissists that are still living in the template that was given to them in childhood wind up recreating that in adulthood because that's familiar and that sucks. There's nothing worse than having your childhood stolen, right? And then having your best adult years stolen as well just sucks. It's just awful. So that's why myself and so many other channels, that's why we put out so much information, hoping to help you guys to avoid a lot of what happened with us. So that leaves us with, well, what do you do? If you have a template of toxic shame, now here's the hard part. If you have that template of toxic shame, just because you realize that it's there because of the narcissist doesn't mean you get rid of the narcissist and that template goes with them. I wish it was like that. But what tends to happen is that you leave all toxic relationships because you finally understand what a healthy relationship is, what an unhealthy relationship is, but the template stays with you until, until you intervene, until you upgrade your beliefs until you upgrade your default emotional states. When you do the inner work, like first you clear out your outer world, like that's, that's understandable, right? It's hard to heal when you have somebody trying to destroy you in your life. So that's understandable, but that's only the first half of the healing. The second half is about going inward and rebuilding what was destroyed for some of us from birth, from birth on. And it is not easy. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say, yes, you should be so excited because it's super easy. You just do one, two, and three and boom. No, it doesn't happen like that. It's more like, this is a rough journey. There are tons of ups, but there are some downswings because the journey is not linear. Coming face to face with your core wounds and your negative beliefs is takes courage. Looking at the narcissist is a lot easier. We get angry and we can look at them, but we feel that power, but we look at our wounds and we feel really vulnerable. And a lot of suppressed and unhealed pain starts to come up and I'm changing colors. But even though it's not easy, it is so worth it because as you're healing and as you're shedding the coping skills and as you're weakening old beliefs and strengthening new ones, right? Because that's what it's like. It's like a gradual weakening and a gradual strengthening. Your life begins to change from the inside out. And it's when we do that inner work that we can finally really feel like we're no longer healing from narcissistic abuse. We shift into living and creating our lives. So it is definitely worth it. If you're looking for some resources, I really want to 
highlight the Thriver School of Transformation. It's only $79.99 a month, and there are nine to 12 live meetings. We meet weekly because healing is about rewiring the brain, learning the somatic modalities that help, as well as the cognitive learning. So if you're interested, we're starting a brand new month. We're going to be talking about toxic shame the whole month. So make sure you check us out. And just to let you know, there's a seven-day free trial so you can taste it and see if you like it.